So, job 316. Just open up to 80 pages, so I'll read. Am I gonna get the full context of the whole book? It is the greatest verse and the greatest text in the Bible. God so loved the world. When you read the scripture by itself, it could sound like that's what it is, right? The book of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So it still boggles my mind now. I still don't get the concept behind it. But you go to like, especially football games. All you see is John 3, 16 signs in the stand. I don't get it. It's a football game. Why is that there? I don't know. But that confuses a lot of people. All right, because when it starts out, it says, for God so loved the world. So unless you understand, see, this is why I always say, grab a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, regardless of how much education you have. Keep it basic, okay, because the, the Bible is a very basic, clear book, all right? Like the world, like a lot of English words, have a lot of different meanings. It all depends how you're using it in, in a sentence. Okay, does that make sense? All right. So like with John 3, 16, and here's the other thing, with scriptures, a lot of uh, so-called Christians, okay, and I say so-called because we're all Christians, we're just not following Christianity, right? Because what does it mean to be a Christian? To follow Christ. What does it mean to follow Christ? Follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Those people that call themselves Christians, they ain't doing commandment one, right? To understand this verse and to understand John 3, 16, which is the most... Um, What's the word? Misinterpreted verse in the world, probably. Okay? You have to understand, number one, that God only chose one people, one group of people, one nation. All right? And in addition to that, that he only gave that one nation this Bible. Contrary to the fact that it's sold at every Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, anywhere, any bookstore, and that anybody could buy it, here's the trick. It's not for everybody. All right. So for a lot of people, for some people, it's a you got some? Yeah. for some people it's a it's a feel good book where they'll just read the heck out of proverbs and psalms all day. Forget about everything else. A lot of women usually they're big on psalms. They'll know psalms. They'll recite that man, hit the foot, all that stuff man, with the hand, you know, and all that stuff. But um, there's a lot of meat in this Bible. It's a history book. It's our history book and it's world it's world history. It's just at a glance. Test, test. Where's the mic? Where's the mic? Give it to one of those real quick. And then give me Colossians 3 and 22. Give it to anybody then. So, so that's that way they read for me. Colossians 3 verse 22. Alright, because one of the curses that came upon us as a people was that we would have to go to the, our enemies of want of all things. And want of all things encompasses everything, including the interpretation of, of God's word that was only given to us as a people in the first place. I'll read that, Colossians 3, verse 22. This is the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. So now, when we were in physical bondage, Esau used this scripture to say, see, you have to obey me, even though I'm, I'm raping your men and women, and I'm beating you, and I'm destroying you physically, spiritually, mentally. They said, according to this scripture, you have to let us do it, because you have to obey us in all things. So if they were able to take this and twist this like this, then how much more so a, a scripture like John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. It's the same thing. It was just taught to us incorrectly. That's why the captain says there's a, a lot of meat in this breakdown. Stick to the basics. Stick, stick to the curses and the things that, that we can relate to. But breaking down John 3, 16 is very important because a person won't understand Revelations 1, 14. They won't understand Drum 28, verse 68, and so on and so forth because they have the John 3, 16 mindset. Yeah. Very true, very true. And again, John 3, 16 and, and Deuteronomy 28, they actually go hand in hand. Because to understand who you're talking about in Deuteronomy 28, you have to understand first who God loves. God so loved the world. So let's first focus on the word love. 
Okay? Who did God love? What is the love in that verse there? Let's go to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. And for the... The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. All right, so it says, For thou, you, are in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee, you, a particular group of people. So again, we're going to take it, we're going to dissect this, all right? Reading this on the surface, surface, it's kind of obvious that he's talking about one particular group of people, right? Now, for those that have been reading the Bible 50 years, front and back, back and front, this clearly should stand out to you and say, hmm, he's saying one group of people are chosen, okay? But no, they let their pastors and what they were taught take out the simplicity of this Bible the simplicity of this verse and confuse it. Okay? So, he's, the Mosai is explaining to, uh, uh, to Moses, and Moses explains to the children of Israel, okay, how the Mosai feels about the Israelites. So, from there, let's go to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Alright? Because, again, remember, like I said, when you open up a book, if you open it up in the middle of a book or in the middle of a chapter, you're not going to get the full context. So, who is this people? Who is Moses speaking to? Right? Remember, the beginning of a chapter, it always explains what the topic is going to be, right? Just like the title of a book pretty much gives you an idea of what the, the contents of the book is going to be. Okay? With the Bible, it's just called the Holy Bible or the King James Holy Bible. Okay? The word Bible just means a collection of books. So it's a holy collection of books. All right? But that's all we have to go by, other than the actual breakdowns. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. To who? Unto all Israel. Go ahead. On this side of Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Azi and uh, Hazarach and Hazarach and Dizahab. And so it says, these be the words which Moses, the author of the first five books of the Bible, through the Spirit of the Most High, spake unto all Israel. So right off the bat, the beginning of this book, Deuteronomy, is telling you what? He's only talking to Israel. What is it? He's only talking to Israel. He's only talking to a nation called Israel. Yeah, in, in chapter 7, if you start at verse 1, he's telling you to not marry the other nations, but to destroy them. And then in jump six, he tells you why. Because you're a special and holy people. So he's, he's, he's making the separation of difference in the same exact chapter. Like Captain said earlier, just read up a little bit and it explains it in this context. Yeah, you should never let anybody try to stump you. First of all, you shouldn't let anybody try to stump you because you should be studying, like the scripture says, study to show thyself approved unto who? Not to us. Unto God. Okay? But even more importantly, if you ever get stuck, because it happens, it's happened to me, read a little bit up, a little bit down. It's going to break it. It's going to explain. You cannot isolate scriptures, okay, in its entirety. You cannot. Yes, some scriptures, they are what they are, okay? But most scriptures are not. This is why the scripture says to read the Bible how? Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Guess what? I used to watch a lot of history channel, and I was into the conspiracy theories years of away before I repented. And you always hear of uh, the mystery of the Bible. The code, the Bible code, right? Uh, Shakespeare wrote it, and look, if you put this letter with this letter and this letter with this letter, all nonsense and foolishness, okay? No, all you gotta do is read Isaiah 28. That's the key. You know what, the, the Bible's simple, okay? You know what the key is to the, to the learn? How you read the Bible? Precept upon precept. It's gonna explain it. When you go with another, that's why you have people that say, oh, are you jumping around all over? Yeah, because that's the way the Bible commands us to read it. And that's the way I'm going to give you the understanding because obviously, according to you, you've been reading it 50 years and you didn't understand that Moses was only talking to one nation called Israel. Okay? So, 
let's go back to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. All right, we already established. Oh, and uh, going back to Deuteronomy uh, 1 and 1, the Most High is a mastermind, by the way, right? He understands that our people are rebellious, okay, and hard-headed, and ain't gonna just take the fact, oh, well, Moses spoke to Israel, yeah, but, you, you hear that a lot, yeah, but, all right, well, just in case you're still not sure, he's telling you geographically where this group of people were at. Okay, on this side, Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain, over, he had to give us a road map to prove that it was Israel, because that's not enough. That's why the Bible's redundant. That's why even within the same chapter, he'll repeat the stuff, he'll repeat. Think about it. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Right? He had to repeat it. Why? Because that's how we are. Okay? So go back. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Who's a holy people unto the Lord thy God? Israel. Why? Where do we read it? Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Okay, go ahead. The Lord thy God had chosen thee to be a special people unto Who's the himself. Who's the thee? Israel. Okay, go ahead. Unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And if you still weren't sure, in the bottom of that verse, he chose one people above who? All people that are upon the face of the earth. Yet you still have scoffers. I, I'll be honest, with this alone, you could come to shut the Bible and be like, hey, I'll either see you at the, in the kingdom or I'll see you in hell. This is clear. This is plain. Okay? This is plain. From there, let's uh, read verse 8. All right, let's go down to 8. Let's read uh, seven, 7 and 8 as well. Verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you. Remember, we're dealing with the word love, right? From John 3, 16, right? We're breaking it down, dissecting it, word, for, almost word for word. Nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out of, with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. All right, and who did he make the covenant with? Yeah, now I don't want calling out. I don't want calling out. Unless I, unless I say, call out, call out. Uh, Eliezer. Who did he make that covenant with? See, you got to know, if you read the Bible, you would know this history. This is basic history. It's nothing deep. He made that covenant with Abraham. With Abraham, right? Eliezer. With Abraham, okay? So, um, from there, let's go to, um, give me, let's go back to John 3.16. Okay, we're going to be going back and forth, okay? So you may want to hold John 3.16, but we're going to keep going back to that. We dissected that. The book of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. All right, so we covered love, right? We covered love. Hopefully you brothers are taking notes because this is how you'll break it down. I, I've used these notes. These notes that I got here are from about nine years ago. Nine years ago. Okay? And I still got them here. I still got them here. And I've used this on family members and just people that teaching the truth, you know, teaching their, their true nationality to, teaching his truth to. All right? And... It's, they, they've left their remains after, after I was done because it was broken down to them in an irrefutable way. They could not refute the fact that that scripture is not talking about all people. All right? Hey, Kev, it, it, even, even it starts with for God's love the world, right? It doesn't say God's love the world. It says for. Even the definition of the word for is the intended purpose too. So for the intended purpose that God loved Israel, he gave his son to die for even like you can't even overlook that word for that that's there for a particular reason to let you know that it's just for an intended purpose the nation of israel absolutely boom absolutely drop the mic um and in order to understand because again if you just read a couple verses up okay it explains you have to understand the whole context of what christ was talking about at that moment all right like everything else in the Bible, when, when it comes to the New Testament, who were the prophets referring to? What were they referring to? 
Remember, the New Testament wasn't written when the, when, when the prophets of the New Testament and Christ was walking the earth. So what were they referring to? The Old Testament. The Old Testament. In this verse, it's the New Testament, right? John is the book of the New Testament, right? What situation was he referring to? You have to understand, so let's read up. Let's read 14. 14, 15, and then 16. The book of St. John, chapter, four, chapter 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So in 14 it's saying, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Okay, who was with Moses in the wilderness? Israel. Israelites. So all of a sudden, I mean, he got like 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 uh, uh, ADD Christ, or he got like uh, uh, a split personality. So all of a sudden, he just put, say, uh, okay, yeah, well, that's what happened to Israelites. But God so loved the world, all right? Uh, so he loved everybody. No, okay, everything is within context. He says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever that was with Moses in the wilderness, okay, believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. So now, maybe that's still a little bit confusing for somebody who's unlearned. So now you got to show them the history. Right. All right? Let's go to Numbers 21. We're going to read 6 through 8. What was Christ referencing? All the prophets in the New Testament are referencing what? The only book that was available to them at the time. The New Testament was not written until about approximately 70 years after the death of Christ. The book of Numbers, chapter 21 and verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Much people of everyone? Much people of Israel died. Of Israel died. Go ahead. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he, may, that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and put it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he look upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now some of you may recognize that symbol. Okay, the ambulance hat. Okay, it's the pole with the snake around it. All right? They take everything from us. Okay? Everything from us. So, let's go back to uh, John 3 and uh, 14. I decided to digress here. St. John chapter 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Stop. Did we just not read the situation, the history of when Moses lifted up the serpent? Who did he lift up the serpent for? The Israelites. Israelites. Okay, go ahead. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Go ahead. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Whosoever is still referring to the Israelites that were in the wilderness. Okay? So from there, let's go ahead now and break down the world. So read John 3 16 again. We're going to be reading it a lot. All right, I want to really drill this hole. Okay. St. John chapter 3 verse 16 For God so loved the world Alright, so he loved the world So we know who he loved Israel But now it could be confusing for some people Wait, but it says the world there Alright uh, Get me the definition uh, It's a car on the computer of world Go to dictionary.com And I believe it's definition number 7 That we want If I'm not mistaken, it's been a while Alright and notice I said number seven, meaning the world has a lot of different definitions. The word world. Okay, just like a lot of words in the English language. Okay, they have a lot of different meanings. All right? You got the Arab world. Right? You got the fashion world. Right? You got the world of sports. Right? Wild world of sports. What's that? Yeah, I still got a little bit of a great level. This is uh, dictionary.com. The word world, number seven. 
a particular class of people with a particular class of people okay. with common interests, aims, etc. Common interests. So if I like fashion, I will be a particular class of an individual that likes fashion. So I'm in that world, the fashion world. If I like sports, I'm in the world of sports. Remember the show, Why World of Sports? Okay? So world has different meanings. When you read it here, it still may not be clear. Okay, well it has other meanings. It means everybody. Okay, well we're gonna break that down even more. Okay? So let's break down world. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and 17, like Brother Mark brought out earlier. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. So right off the bat, it's mentioning the nation of Israel, that they're going to be saved, right? So that's letting you know what the next sentences are going to be about, okay? Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. We are a world without end. Israel is a world without end, okay? Give me John 17 to 17, I think it is. Okay? In the New Testament. The book of St. John, chapter 17, and verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. He prayed for them. He didn't pray for the whole world. Why? Because the, it, this Bible was never for everyone. Okay? But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And according to uh, John 10, 27... Who did, we, who, who did the Most High give unto him? My sheep hear my voice and they follow me, right? Okay. And, John, and Matthew 15, 24. Who was he sent for? The lost sheep of Israel. Okay. It's very, you can close the Bible here now too. And just walk off and tell them, see you in heaven. I'll see you in heaven. Going, right. going back to Isaiah 45, it says that ye shall never be ashamed nor confounded. Right? The reason why that particular precept is so heavy because at one point in time we all lived as Gentiles, right? And we had a little bit of hope under, with the understanding that, okay, we could be grafted in because God loves the whole world. Not understanding that that's talking about just us. You're never ashamed or confounded because no longer are you an African American or a Mexican, but you're an Israelite from, from whichever tribe that, that you pertain to. And you can't be confounded because you can prove it going precept upon precept with God's word. Right, and first and foremost, because you're keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, right? And according to Psalms 111 and 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding of all day that do His commandments. So the person that's been reading this for 50 years ain't got the understanding because you ain't even doing commandment one. Okay? Um, let's go to John 18 and 20. The book of St. John, chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. All right, so that's a, this is a massive bomb right here for one. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world, right? I ever, meaning I indeed, taught in the synagogue. Did Edomites hang out in the synagogue? No. Nope. Did Arabs, Ammonites, uh, uh, Moabites hang out in the synagogue? Synagogue was an exclusive place, was it not? Yes, sir. A, an exclusive place of worship for who? The Jews. The Jews. The Israelites. So Christ said, I ever, uh, uh, I ever taught in the synagogue, but if that wasn't enough, and in the temple where did the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Okay? So you go there because it mentions the word world in there. All right? And it breaks down even further what Christ was talking about. That's from Christ's mouth. From there, okay, let's break down, uh, let's go to Matthew 9, 35. Let's get more understanding of world. Okay. So some of you are new in here. This is probably the first time you've ever been hearing a breakdown of John 3, 16 at all let alone like this, okay? Uh, yeah, Matthew uh, 9, 35, please. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, 
and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Okay, so he was teaching in the synagogues where the Jews always resort. Who was he healing? Was he healing everybody? No. Right? Not at all. Okay? From there, let's uh, go back to John 3.16. All right, and now we want to cover the word whosoever. So, so far, to keep track of it, we've covered the word love, who he loves, who the Most High loves, and we covered who the world is. Who are you speaking about the world in? What context they're using the world in that verse? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So for those who, those Israelites that don't believe the Israelites, I don't know the Israelites, that still want to hold on to the white man, they'll be like, but you see, okay, so the first part is true. I got that. But he gives them a chance in the second part. So whosoever believes on him can have eternal life. Right? The book of Acts, chapter 2, and verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh-oh. You just shot yourself in the foot. You messed up. You should have never went to that scripture, right? But we know, because we're learned in IUSC, right, that you can find the answers above or below, and that it's just a continuation of thought. Remember, this is... The Bible was one big letter. It was broken up into chapters and to verses for easy reading. And to be able to reference. Okay? So here we go. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel. Who? Ye men of Israel. Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. All right, so from there, let's go back to, uh, let's go to uh, Joel 2.32. We're still working on the word whosoever. The book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Okay, so again, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Again, if you're reading it on its surface, and you don't understand the history behind the Bible, that the Bible is not a, a, a feel-good book only. It's a lot more than that. It's a history book. Unless you understand that, you're not going to realize, okay, that in some verses, it doesn't even have to be so clear because it's understood already that you understand who they're talking about. Okay? That's why people who... This book is not for, should not be even picking this book up. Okay, now, there's Edomites that do know that we're God's chosen. But they're not going to say it. Okay, think about it like this. If it was the other way around, would you want to lose your crown? No. You would do everything possible, man, so that your, your competition, okay, your successor, according to the Bible, would not know who they really are. Because at the end of the day, when are we gonna be? When, when are we gonna go home? What what event has to happen? What's that? Wait, Arthur Bella. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of his name. Hold on. A second. Not Marcus, right? No. Yeah, Eric. Eric. Woo! Could when uh, when twelve thousand from each tribe wake up. Okay, where did you find that? Revelation. Eighteen. Twenty-one. You telling me or are you are you not sure? You're not sure? Okay, you're strong or wrong. You should the right way should have been like Revelation 18. Right? right? And I would have been like wrong. <laughs> but you were strong when you did it, right? Yes sir. Okay? Let's get it. Revelation 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 7 and verse 4. 
And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Does that mean, oh, I, I got a question for you. So, in that 144,000, okay, that means the women could be seen with those. Also, it's going to be all men, correct? I don't know. You just showed me doubt. It's going to be 144,000 men. Oh, yeah, how do you know that? You're not sure? Okay, here's the precept. Here's how you prove it. That's okay, but it's not wrong. Hey, you give me the stab at it, and that's all I can ask. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pastor, are men. And I am your God, saith the Lord God. All right, so who's the, what, who, what's, what's the gender of the flock of the pastor of the Most High? Ezekiel, 34, 31. I don't know, y'all don't sound convinced. Man, man, man. Man, you sure? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all don't seem sure. You sure, Eric? You got it? I am now. Okay, all crazy. All right, so from there, let's go to... Um, let's go back to Joel 2 and 32. The book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. What scripture would you go to to prove who's going to be delivered? And where was that said? What is the prophet Joel referencing? Daniel 12 and 1. All right, this is a scripture you would use to break down delivered in that verse. The book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Shall be what? Shall be delivered. Delivered. Remember, you want to always try to use the word that's in the verse. When you get the precept, it has the same word. Okay? Every one that shall be found written in the book. Every one that shall be found written in the book. All right? From there, let's go to Acts 13. Verse 16 and, and 26. Alright. Who's going to be delivered? Let's get more clarity on that. The book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 16. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel and ye that fear God give audience. 26. Verse 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you fear God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. Okay, so who's going to be delivered? Israel. Okay, so you break it down even further. I tell you, you want to take the meat off the bone. You want to leave them without any doubt. Okay? Some will have still doubt, but time and chance to us all, right? Ain't no magic scripture that's going to get anybody to repent. You just got to bring out the word of the Most High. And let the chips fall where they may. Let's go back to John 3, 16. It was Acts 13, verse 16 and 26. The book of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, so now let's go ahead and cover Believe It. All right, Believe It. We're going to go to Sirach and the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32 to 24. All right, whosoever believe it, what does it mean to believe? The book of Sirach, chapter 32, verse 24. And he that believeth in the Lord, taketh heed to the commandment. And he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse. All right, so to believe means to do the laws, statutes, and commandments. Alright? 
From there, let's go to uh, Titus 3 and 8. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 8. This is a faithful saying, and in these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. All right, what are the good works that we're supposed to maintain? Let me see. Uh, who wants to give a stab at it? Uh, Brother Tobias. Shalom, baby sure. Shalom, brother. Uh, the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. Very good. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. Write this down, those of you who didn't know. You're going to get that. Oh, but I'm a good person. Well, what does it mean to be good according to the Bible? Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandments holy, and just, and good. Okay, you got it, Kato? Yes, sir. Okay. Christian, you got it? Okay, you got it, brother? Okay. All right, so that's what it means to be good according to the most high of the scriptures. All right, from there, let's go to Acts 21 and 20. Still working out, uh, it means to believe, be good, keep the commandments. The book of Acts, chapter 21 and verse 20. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. All right, so there's your proof. They believe and they're zealous of the law. All right, so to believe, according to the scriptures, means you're following the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, uh, from there, let's go back to John 3.16. So, so far, we covered love. We covered uh, whosoever. Uh, we covered the world. We covered whosoever. We covered believe it. Okay, we covered delivered, but that wasn't in John 3.16. Okay, that was just to explain to well, uh, 2.32. All right. Let's conclude, I guess. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, let's go to Hebrews 9, verse 22. It says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. All right. I'm going to touch on a few precepts for uh, Hebrews 9, verse 22. For the part that says, Gave His only begotten Son. Okay, so write that down. This is for the understanding of Gave His only begotten Son. All right, so you're getting a bonus here. All right, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So, in order for there to be an atonement of sin, there has to be the shedding of blood. Under the old covenant, the shedding of blood was, what, animal sacrifice, right? But we couldn't be atoned from all sin through animal sacrifice. If you were a idolater, it was death. If you broke the Sabbath, it was death. If you dishonored your mother and your father, you got put to death. All right? But now through the new covenant, we now keep the, the laws, but in the faith in Christ. He was the blood that was spilt for us to be brought back to the Most High. So I want to start with that point first. Blood had to be spilled for us all to come back to the Father. Give me Colossians 1 and verse 14. Colossians 1 verse 14. So there has to be a shedding of blood for the remission of sins. Colossians 1 verse 14. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So that his is referring to Christ. Through his blood, we now have the chance to come back and be forgiven from all sin. No matter what matter of sin you're in the midst of in the world, when you come back and start with this repentance process, it's through his blood that now you can have that remission for the sins, right? Now, give me Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Because John 3, 16 says that he gave his only begotten son. Again, you read that on the surface, you think, okay, Christ died for everybody. God's laws weren't given to everybody to break in the first place. That's why it says in Psalms 147, as for his sacrifice for his judgments, the nations have not known them. That's why he didn't deal with them the same way that he's dealing with us. 
All right, Matthew 15, verse 24, to really nail it home on who his only begotten son was sent to. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So his only begotten son that he gave for those to come back, believe, keep the loss, and, and eventually obtain the everlasting life, Christ lets you know himself. I didn't come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, okay. All praises. All praises. All right, so you got a little bonus there, a little deeper breakdown of that part of the verse. All right. Um, from there, let's go to John 17. Uh, we're going to read 9 and 14. Here we go. The book of John, chapter 17, verse 9. We read this earlier, but I just want to stay with the, uh, with the uh, scriptures here. Okay. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Okay, so we are not of the world. That's why you hear the expression in the truth, hey, back in the world. Okay, back in the world. Or he went back or she went back into the world. All right, talk about worldly things, okay, the carnal world. All right. Is again another break that you have the spiritual world and you have the carnal world. Okay? We came from the carnal world to the spiritual world. Alright? Go so, read 14. Verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Alright, so Christ, this is Christ speaking. Alright? And he's saying here, I gave them the word. We have been given the word. Okay? And the world hates us. How many times you out there teaching somebody? Look at your family members. You got your family members that everything was lovey-dovey just the day before you came with them with the scriptures. Read 14 again. St. John chapter 17. No, 14. Verse 14. I have given them thy word and the world had hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. And all Christ is saying there that once you repent, you're not in that life, you're not in that worldly stuff anymore. That's why the scripture says, uh, give me that in our, uh, all right, this is why we're commanded to do this. And for some of us, it's hard. I mean, like real hard, like, like basic stuff to get out is still hard. Some of y'all still struggling with smoking cigarettes. Okay, we know. We know, all right, some of y'all still struggling with that. Some of y'all may be struggling with pork. I mean, that's between you and the most high, man. We, we, not, we can't lord over anybody. We can just give you the commandments. Here. The book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Okay, because those that are in the world, family members, friends, people we know, they're going to receive at the place. And the place is the destruction that's coming to Babylon. Can you please look up? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Go to 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17. This this is a precept with Revelation 18, verse 4. But this precept right here totally smashes that come as you are thing. All right? The, the whole come as you are doctrine comes from when Christ says, All you that are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. Yeah. All Christ is quoting there is Isaiah 14 anyways, about those of you that, that are heavy laden with what? Captivity and sin come unto me and then the long term goal is what? The rest, the kingdom of heaven. But 2 Corinthians 16, or 6 verse 17, it says Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, that's the sin, the stuff that you were involved with in the world, and I will receive you. That's when the Lord is going to receive you. After you come out, be separate, and stop partaking in the sin that you were in the midst of back in the world. All right, from there, um, let's go to Luke. Huh? The book of Luke, and I want uh, chapter 1. And let's start at 68. We're going to read all the way down to 74. All right, so here's some more precepts to prove that John 3.16 is... Uh, it's not talking about that God loves everybody. And you know, it's interesting because like when you first come in, you got John 3, 16, you got the breakdown and you're like, okay, yeah, I see it. But you kind of feel, I know I did, I was like, damn, but I want more. Because like, when I 
destroy somebody's doctrine, I want to like destroy it like it's never going to rear its ugly head again. So I always wanted more. And there's plenty more. You know, for time purposes, I'm not going to go into all of them, but let's go into a couple more. The book of St. Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Stop. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Right there, you can close the Bible and walk away. And tell them, I'll see you in heaven. I'll see you in hell. All right? For he had visited and redeemed his people. His people. Possessive pronoun. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Thee have I loved. All right? And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Stop. Who could tell me what, when it says water salvation, what's that referring to? Brother Craig. Question is, what is the water salvation referring to in that verse? It's referring to Christ. Okay, and how do you know that? I uh, don't have a scripture. Okay. Primarily, a horn represents kingdom. Okay. So it's using an analogy. Right? That's the answer. Um, okay. And has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. All right, so that we should be saved. Okay, again, what's the topic? Israel, right? It started with Israel in verse 68. Okay. Right. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. And that right there is the gospel in a nutshell. Because that's some good news right there, right? We're going to be delivered, saved from our enemies. Of them that hate us. Okay? We were always hated. From the book, from the book of Genesis, we were hated. Who can show me where? What incident in, in Genesis took place? It was one of the first incidents. Way at the first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a lot of stuff that happened. Uh, we can't enable. Okay, I'll take that one. That was the one that came to my mind after, but there's one other one. You are wrong. You were right. That's one of them, right? Because Cain represents Esau, right? The spirit of Esau today. Okay, and he hated Abel, who represented who? That's the one God loved, right? He had to send it Israel. That's the correlation. Read it from the... Uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 11, and verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. So we actually... Who could tell me what that language was? Hebrew. This is, I didn't call him because his hands went up like the Lord. He figured it out. <laughs> Disrespectful, bro. And it came to pass... As they journeyed from the east, and they found the plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And the they said, "The land of Shinar, write this down, is Sumer, S-U-M-A, or Sumeria." Okay, go ahead. And they dwelt there, and they said one to another, "Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly." And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, "Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven." And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. All right, so the point there is in verse 4. They didn't have a name. They were just there. Remember, when you read Genesis, you had the Adam, okay, who we come from, and then you had Adam, which were the other people. Okay? You had the sons of God, the sons of man and the sons of the wicked. There was three categories of people in the book of Genesis. Okay? Let's read that. The book of St. Luke, chapter 3, verse 38. Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, 
which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. All right, so the lineage of Adam was the sons of God. Okay? Right? So in the Tower of Babel, why did they build that tower? Because God, they knew the Most High was not for them. Okay? It goes on to say, let us make a name for ourselves. Let us, first of all, let us build a tower to the heaven. That all goes back to Esau spirit. All right? They exalt themselves above the stars and amongst the clouds. Okay? When you read 2 Thessalonians, let's get that real quick. Start from, uh, start from four. Just to get to the, the book of Second Thessalonians, chapter two and verse four. Who opposed it and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Give me an example of how he sits. He shows himself to being God and sitting in the temple of God. Joke. Come on, leadership. Caesar Borgia. Caesar Borgia, exactly. All right, they put him all over the place, especially the Catholic churches. They got him all over. Okay, showing that that's what God is. Okay, representing that that he's an Edomite. The Book of Romans, chapter three and verse one. What advantage then have the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? So, when you think about John three sixteen, okay. You need to ask yourself this question. What advantage do we have, right? Because at the end of the day, if if John 316 is for everybody, then that waters down our power, right? As Israelite men and women. It waters down our purpose. Right? So Paul is saying, what advantage did it have to Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Okay? Much every way. Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So that right there eliminates John 3.16. Because in order to get salvation, you've got to be following the law, statutes, and commandments. And Paul's telling you right here exactly what we already know, that the commandments were not given to the other nations. Go ahead. For what if some did not believe? What if some people don't believe when you show them that John 3.16 is not talking about the whole world? Go ahead. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. God forbid. Hell to the no. Go ahead. Yea, let God be true. Let God be true. Let this Bible be true. All the verses that we quote out here in John 3.16 breakdown. Right now. But every man a liar. But every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. All right. So, I pray you uh, were edified with this class. Um, that's the deep meat off the bone, leave them in a coma, break down of John 3.16. Alright, so let's get ready to uh, for the next quarters class and let's uh, let's try to stay nearby, right? Because it could be started any minute. Alright? Alright, shalom. 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 I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.